Hey guys, and welcome to another Rottler Tech Tip Series. I'm Ryan, the Applications Engineering Manager here at Rottler, and today's topic, cylinder boring, and specifically, what inserts are available, what options we have, the feeds and speeds, some of the information, some of the data, what we can do in terms of programming our machine controls, uh, all of that's gonna be covered here. So stick around and we'll walk you through kind of all the basics here uh, when it comes to boring cylinders on, whether that be an automotive, a diesel, or even a, a large diesel block. Uh, so uh, some of the things today in, in modern machining, uh, a lot of the times we're using indexable tooling or uh, insert based tooling. These are carbide inserts of various shapes, sizes, grades. And there could be a bit of mystery behind um, what they're all designed for, when you should be using what insert, and how fast you should be running them in the material that you're cutting. Um, in general, uh, there's uh, three options for general through boring or just uh, oversized boring. And for Rottler, we've tried to take as much of the guesswork out of selecting the right tools and programming your machine as possible. Uh, I have with me here our, our boring and surfacing inserts catalog. You can find this on our website. Go down to the bottom of the page and look up the um, uh, optional equipment catalogs. And in here, there's a lot of great information uh, regarding any of the inserts that we offer and sell and some basic starting points for RPM and feed rate on where you can run them. Now, uh, as I said, in, in general boring, we have really three main options that we would recommend. Um, we have two options in triangular shaped inserts and one square. Now, any of the Rottler carbide inserts follow the ANSI designation standard, uh, the American National Standards Institute. Uh, for example, uh, uh, on these triangle inserts, we have our RT321 and our RT322. Now, those three numbers tell you a lot of information about the insert, uh, the size, the thickness, and the nose radius. So the first number, that three, is the size of the insert uh, as measured in what's called the inscribed circle. Threes are gonna be a 3 8 IC size insert, uh, two being an eighth inch thickness. And the last number, that nose radius, those are measured in 1 64th of an inch. So on a 321, that one means the nose radius is 1 64th of an inch, uh, which is about 15 thousandths of an inch. A 322 is 2 64ths, or converted down to 1 32nd, and that's about 31 thousandths um, of an inch. Same goes for the squares. So the triangles will be RTs, the square would be an RS, S for square, 3 8 eighth inch thickness, and again, a 30 seconds nose radius. Um, in general, uh, the applications for these three inserts, uh, the triangles, you would use those in your sleeving applications. Uh, they're a, a, a positive rake insert, meaning that you only cut with one face of this insert because they are relieved on the back. And they have a nice flat bottom that allows you to make a counter bore if you're sleeving or if you need to do offset boring for clearance for uh, lower overstroke on your hones, or if you have a blind hole, typically you'll be using a, a RT series insert. Uh, the 321 being the tighter nose radius, this is what you want to finish if you're doing a, a sleeving application. For general boring where you're doing either a blind hole or you have offset, that 322, the larger nose radius allows you to create the same finish at a faster feed rate. Um, the, the larger nose being meant to take more material out faster. And in general, if you can get away with it, you want to use that. On the squares, <clears throat> the, the square is a negative rake insert. Uh, so it's actually presented uh, angled back uh, from the top to the bottom of the insert. And it has a lead angle in it. Now, the, the negative rake means that we're actually able to flip the insert over and we can use both sides. So. If we have four edges on a square and both sides, we get eight effective cutting edges. Uh, this insert can typically be ran the fastest in terms of RPM and feed rate, and you also get eight sides. So whenever you can use a RS322 in your, in your general through boring, this is typically gonna be, you know, for me, this is the one I grab most often. Uh, if I do need to just do through boring and I have that blind hole, I would look for an RT322. So, 
Um, I've got a, all three of the inserts here. We've got our boring mic. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about these. And then we'll hop in on the F10XS. That's our CNC boring and surfacing machine. I've got an LS block loaded in it. And we'll take a couple cuts uh, at some various feed rates just to show kind of the differences in how you can program. You know, one of the nice things about CNC machines today is you've got infinitely variable uh, RPM and feed rate. You can simply type it in on the control and the machine can run it. This allows you to really dial in and optimize your feeds and speeds, which will give you the best tool life, the best productivity, and the best results. So let's take a look. So down here on the worktop, we've got uh, kind of the series, the three different versions of inserts that we would commonly use in, in general boring applications. Our triangles here, the 321, which this is gonna have that tight 64th nose radius. Again, positive rake, so it's relieved. You cut with this side, put it in your triangle holders. And this is gonna be for your finishing. Well, uh, if you're sleeving and you gotta leave a, a, a counterboard lip, you wanna keep that nice tight uh, nose radius in there. For general through boring uh, and triangles, we have the 322s. This has that 32nd inch nose radius. And this is going to be uh, a good application if you've got blind holes or if you need to do a shift offset bore to clearance, like on a small block Chevy. And then finally, this is that square. So being negative rake, meaning that the insert points kind of away um, uh, from the top edge here, and allows you to cut with both sides. You get four edges per face, two faces, total eight. Again, this would be the, whenever you can use this, uh, the most economical and usually the highest productivity. All of these will create, uh, when ran at the proper feeds and speeds, will create uh, the, about the same in terms of cylindricity, straightness, and roundness. Uh, if we look at these inserts, you know, when we, when we want to run these, you know, these are them out. So on our, on our 321 here, where we've got the uh, 64ths nose radius, Typically, this insert, in terms of the feed rates that we would run, we would run this anywhere between 800 to 1,200 RPM in general applications. And for the feed rate, we'd be running this uh, anywhere between two to six thousandths inch per revolution for typical applications. When we move to the 30 seconds nose radius, that RT322, being the same insert, the same grade of carbide, and the same coating, the RPM stay the same, you know, 800 to 1200 RPM. But our feed rate on this, with a larger nose radius, we're gonna wanna push this faster. So this one we would typically see running this between six to all the way as high as 12 thousandths inch per revolution feed rates. And the reason for that is <clears throat> when we go to a larger nose radius, we're creating more pressure at the cut. And that tool pressure, if we don't engage the tool enough, uh, this can lead to chatter, especially in very long bores. Now everything will work just fine as long as we feed the insert. Carbide inserts specifically, they like to take cuts and they like to be fed. So you want to keep that in mind when you go to larger nose radiuses. And then on our square, our square again, it's a 32nd inch nose radius. This one with the negative rake geometry, uh, we like to run this anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 RPM typically, and this was actually designed to be ran between a four and eight thousandths inch per revolution feed rate. The negative rake angle actually allows this to be ran a little bit of slower on feed rate for finer finishes, but also still achieve higher feed rates than a 321. So those are your general starting points. Again, all of these would uh, kind of assume, you know, using a four inch diameter bore for a standard. Now any of these uh, inserts and cartridges can be ran the same inside of your Rottler supplied uh, boring micrometer. So it's actually very simple. Uh, once you've calibrated your boring micrometer, any of these inserts, it's not gonna change anything. You can select any one you want. The triangles either can be run in any of these holders. So we've gone ahead and set our RS322 square and I've got it set uh, to take 36 thousandths. Now, for Rottler machines, we always certify that if you're taking 40 thousandths or less, uh, that you'll have a roundness and straightness of sub one thousandths. Uh, typically, we see around a half thousandths um, 
to maybe seven tenths. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is because it is a dry machining center we're working on and most of our equipment are, uh, the insert will grow on the first hole of the day by about a half thousand. So uh, when you're running it at a, the, the highest RPM, 1200, it's not uncommon to see about a half thousand of growth on the first hole. And then everything from then on out for the day will, will usually come out exactly the same. Again, in a general boring application where we would leave between three and five thousandths of material for honing, uh, this doesn't uh, have any effect on the end result. In sleeving applications, when we're sleeving and we want to make sure that, say we're putting a two to two and a half thousandths interference fit on our sleeve, uh, that's where we're gonna wanna run probably on the lower RPM range to reduce the amount of heat that, that's going into the tool and, and make sure that we're keeping our, our total straightness and total growth below a half thousand. But for today we got our LS, we're set to 35, assuming we were doing a, a 40 overbore on a block and, and we're set to uh, between 35, 36 thousandths total material removal. And what we'll do here is we're gonna run the first two bores at 800 RPM and a four thou feed rate. So this would be the lowest RPM and the lowest feed rate for this insert. And then we'll run the last two at the highest uh, recommended, which will be 1200 RPM and an 8,000 feed rate, just so you can see the difference in cycle times. So as always with the Rottler control, I can come in and I will just turn on my first two cylinders. I'm going to type in 800 for my RPM and four thousandths for my feed rate. Now, I'll go ahead, I've already got this program set up, so we are ready to just hit cycle start, press bore left, and we'll let this run. So now that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off these two holes. 
And now we're gonna run cylinders three and four, 1200 RPM, and an 8,000 feed rate. All right, put more left here, and let it run. So that's finished its cycle much faster running at 1208, obviously. You're looking at about uh, just under two minutes of bore at the low end range with this insert and uh, up to about 36 seconds, I believe, just over a, a half a minute here for the last two. So productivity definitely improved on this side. Again, this insert, it's rated for all of this. This is where it likes to run. It can run anywhere in this range and it'll last a long time produce a great result anyway if you have any questions please go and check out uh go to rottlermfg.com go to our optional equipment page and find our uh, boring and surfacing inserts bulletin and manual there's a lot of great information in there uh, and let us know what are you running what types of equipment uh, what feeds and speeds do you run? If you have any questions, go ahead and you can email me, ryan at rottlermfg.com. As always, thanks for letting us be a part of your goals and your needs, helping you out with uh, creative and unique solutions. We'll catch you next time and happy machining.